Casual Magic has been brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can get cool stuff. Use the code CASUAL to get 5% off of your sale. And then also by Coalesce Apparel, where you can get really cool t-shirts and stuff. And use the code Casual Magic to get 10% off your sale. And by Architect, a deck hosting website that doesn't really sell anything, but they like me and I like them. So kindly use them. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Casual Magic, the show where we talk about the fun side of Magic the Gathering. My name is Stephen Button. Casual Magic is brought to you by Cool Stuff and Coalesce Apparel and Architect. I love them, they love me, and you should also love them so that they can continue to love me. Um, today, in my newest, in my continuing series of talking to fellow CAG members that I've worked with for years and had totally not been able to talk to on my show, I have brought the hardest one of us to get a hold of, Mr. Greg Sablin, who is on the other side of the world from me, which is why it's real, real hard to get you on the podcast. But uh, Greg is joining me today from sunny Japan. Uh, how's it going, my friend? Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's been like a year of us trying to actually match up and get on the show. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm over here in Japan. Things are going really well. I appreciate uh, you asking me to uh, come on the show, Shivam. <laughs> And I appreciate you reminding me continuously to have you on because I've got a really bad memory, like legit, <laughs> that's an actual human problem I have. And lately Twitter has started deleting like, or just erasing DM history. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why are you taking away the one record I have of all the appointments I've made? Um, <laughs> but, but, um, I'm actually really interested in talking to you because you have, unlike a lot of us who are on the CAG in the first generation of CAG members, I guess, um, a lot of us were content creators or like, you know, Watsy figure people who had some like, I don't know, presence in the audience and you are special because you were, I guess, the civilian of the, of the group as it were. <laughs> Cause I remember when, when Sheldon was talking about expanding the CAG for the first time, he first off mentioned that he met you in like a DC at a, the command fest or something. And you presented like this whole like spreadsheet worth of knowledge to him that he was <laughs> deeply impressed by. And the fact that you're in the military, which has a huge commander playing population because obviously Sheldon is also, you know, from that branch of the service or whatever. And I was like, okay, well who the hell is this guy? And I couldn't <laughs> find anything about you because you didn't have like a Twitter presence at the time. I'm not on Instagram and I don't really use Facebook or whatever. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what are yeah, we going to yeah. do? But it turns out that you ended up being really cool. So I'm super excited. I'm really glad to have you as a colleague. So um, maybe we could start. So where are you from? You're like from Guam, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm from the island of Guam. Uh, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I left the island in 2002, actually. So it's been over 20 years at oh, this well, point. <laughs> yeah, but you probably lived there for a good chunk of your life, at least, though, right? Or at least the early part of your life. Yeah. Uh, at the point in time where I felt it was necessary uh, by becoming an <laughs> adult and then doing, uh, you know, adult things, that's when I left. <laughs> yes. When it's no longer time to live with your parents, you're like, you know what? I think we're good. Um, so you're in the army and that means you must have gone to like West Point or like one of those <laughs> schools back in, in America somewhere, right? Uh, or mainland. Yeah, so I, I am active duty army. Like, mind you, that's the extent of my knowledge of like army things. No, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I'm active duty army. Been in the army for over 16 years now. So that's a long time. Yeah, four four years short of retirement, and uh, you Damn. know, being being part of the army, I, I guess you could, or just being part of the, the military in general. Uh, you, you have uh, officers and then enlisted, and so it varies between. Uh, the branches of services, but in the mm -hmm. army, uh, I'm an officer. I, I commissioned in 2006. Uh, you mentioned West Point. Yeah, that was my alma mater. Uh, so yeah. uh, when I graduated from there, that was 2006. And then I commissioned as a uh, second lieutenant uh, combat engineer. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my upbringing in the army 16-ish years ago. Combat engineer. That's like, that's a job that I've heard of before in like fantasy novels. It's like mm -hmm. the, but I mean, in fantasy novels, that's like the group of people who go down and like knock down walls or build bridges or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the branch. Sorry, I'm trying not to sound ignorant. I'm no, trying no. to be like all cool here, but like 
no, really. it's fine. It's fine. Like uh, <laughs> th- that's the thing is like if you're if you're not in the military, uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, figure out what the military does. Yeah. And you know the different branches of services: Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines, now Space Force. <laughs> They, you know, Boy, they the all three have guys in the jobs. Space Force feel real special right now, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, they, they are a real thing, so we have to acknowledge them. Yeah, but, I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, combat engineer, uh, basically what an engineer does, uh, at least for the Army, is uh, probably one of two main things. Uh, we, we either um, – actually, we, we do a, quite a bit, but uh, you, you might be familiar with a, a sapper, uh, what a sapper is uh, – basically someone who is uh, uh, able to employ demolitions effects. Uh, and mm. so we, th- we do things like breach obstacles and place obstacles. Uh, so like in, in, in periods of, of conflict, if an engineer uh, needed to uh, place uh, things like mines, um, you know, we, we do counter mining operations, we do breaching operations, assaults, stuff like that. Uh, but the other, the other side of a combat engineer is uh, the construction side. Uh, and I guess you could say that's that's pretty much the two flavors. You, you have other flavors uh, in yeah. in the combat engineering uh, branch, uh, but those are those are the uh, two main ones. So the construction side, you can do horizontal construction. Uh, you could do uh, vertical construction, building, you know, building, uh, you know, woodwork uh, fortifications buildings. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So if if you think about it, like if there's an army or a um, a unit uh, in conducting an operation, uh, what do they need to do to breach an obstacle? What do they need to in place an obstacle? So uh, however way you do that, as long as it can be built uh, or employed, that's that's the main thing. Uh, so that's right. that's what I was when I first started in the Army 16 years ago. But I've since transitioned away from that in, in uh, 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 about five years ago to another branch of, of the Army. Yeah, we're going to leave it at that because you're still working and would like to continue to work. And uh, I would also not like to go to jail for military <laughs> secrets on my magic podcast. But that's really cool. And uh, I mean, it's it's fascinating to me, especially because like the sappers and like kind of the combat engineer type of thing. When, you know, you hear about like, oh, you know, we're in Vietnam and we need a bridge to cross this river. And then the combat engineers mm-hmm. come out and build a bridge so that the the you know the soldiers can walk across or whatever yeah or like you know you have to figure out how to get past the big walls and the barricades and then mm-hmm. you guys come out and it's like here's a bunch of plastic let's go but it's probably more <laughs> uh, technologically savvy than that um but how did you discover magic then right right uh so i, I have to look over my notes uh really quick because, um, <laughs> sometimes my years are off but I guess you could say I mostly remember starting out uh, in fourth edition, and at the time on on Guam, uh, you know, as as a young a young kid, most of the things that that uh, you know, I, I guess you could say nerds like us were, were interested in were things like Golden Eye, Nintendo sixty four, yeah, sure, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe playing you know street basketball, whatever, right. um, you know, maybe there's the the, the flavor of Dungeons and Dragons. You know, getting getting your friends to to either DM or play with you, stuff like that. And then there was always there was always magic kind of in the background, and so uh, it, it became more of the forefront when I started really getting into it. When my brother uh, and I uh, started, I guess we started collecting, and as we started to learn the game, um, my brother actually uh, put together binders of Ice Age and binders of uh, fourth of it, fourth edition. And, nice. you know, we had, I think we started binders with like alliances and, and we even <laughs> tried to start binder, I think with revised. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we didn't know the value of a lot of the cards at the time, but as I started to figure that <laughs> None out. None of us did, man. Oh yeah. No one did. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I got into magic at around that time. And then fast forward, I started re- reading uh, in, in Quest Gamer, Scry Magazine. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, these, these decks are so cool. I remember seeing... <laughs> I remember seeing this one deck and I was like, holy hell, this is awesome. Um, they posted it. I think there's two cards that were shown. One was Bizarre Baghdad. The other one was Living Death. And, oh, man. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I got to break this. This is awesome. So um, I think there was a deck list that was posted in Inquest or something. And uh, yeah, I went... Bizarre of Baghdad even then was expensive. Oh, actually, at that time, maybe 17 bucks. I remember purchasing copies at $17 a piece. 
Um, I think actually, yeah, because people didn't, because Bizarre didn't really break until Dredge showed up. Indeed. Like, yeah, there was Living Death and stuff, but it, like it didn't become psycho until everybody was like, oh, this is just free. But um, <laughs> yeah, man. No, like, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. Guam is on the other side of the like the world from America, but it's still part of America. Yes, but was it hard for you to get things like D and D and magic? I mean, I would assume like the media you got would probably be more like Australian TV or Japanese TV <laughs> or something like that. No, or, no. Like, I mean, I I feel like an ignorant Westerner, which no, is the no, thing I fine. rail against a lot. But what was it like growing up? Like, could, technically part of America, but like seventeen hours away. That right, way. right. Did you get the same pop culture and like? I mean, yeah, yeah. Did, how did you get magic in Guam? Yeah, so I, in a sense, pop culture. I guess you could say it. It. Um, it's probably maybe slightly. It, at the time, it was probably slightly behind for mm. me about two months in terms of American pop culture and things like that. So sure. If anything came out in the U.S., it, it wouldn't be like a delay, so to speak. But you know, the trending of doing mm. certain things probably was maybe delayed by two months. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit longer, but anyway, uh, because we're in American territory, um, for those of, of of your viewers and, and listeners who don't know, um, it was American territory uh, as of 1950. Everyone born on the island uh, is an American yeah. citizen immediately after uh, that year, and so uh, you know we didn't have to worry too much about being American citizens or naturalized or anything like that as long right. as you're born after that year. Anyhow. Uh, you know, I, I still listen to the same rap music, you know, the, the pop music of the 90s, uh, you know, that everyone else did. My, my cousins in the States, in California, they would tell me all kinds of stuff about Bloods and Crips and things like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. But, you know, and then like on Guam, they, they had this other kind of a thing. I, I mean, I don't remember the name, but, you know, there was the yeah, trend, sure. like these trends that happened in the States. They they end up on Guam and then it's like, OK, is there a Guam spin that could be could be spun on it? <laughs> and, and so magic magic just like any other i guess product at the time so you know the video game video game culture was huge back then mm. and everyone had a nintendo everyone had you know a genesis or whatever or or whatever yeah. it is that, that you felt comfortable with right so if right. you had all of those that's great uh but you're kind of the rich, you kid. Had rich parents <laughs> yeah and but you know i was i was a kid that 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 um you know i went to public high schools uh, even though I mm. went to the academy in West Point in 2002, I, I was a public, a public high school uh, type guy, and uh, you know I didn't have a lot of the stuff, but you know the the things that I did enjoy, I enjoyed a lot and had a blast with them. Magic, magic being one of them. That's sweet, man. Because like, I always am fascinated when people outside of mainland America get access to things because mm -hmm. i know i've spent a lot of time growing up i mean not growing up but as a kid i used to go to hawaii a lot mm -hmm. and a lot of their pop culture was like you know k-pop and j-pop and like <laughs> influenced very heavily by by stuff because like you yeah. know hawaii is in the middle of the ocean so mm -hmm. whatever got there easier is what they would use and they had like american stuff but they also had like yeah native hawaiian stuff and then like mm -hmm. japanese stuff that we in california would spend like years trying to get to like I remember DDR was huge in Hawaii before it came to, <laughs> to uh, California and um, like Guam is just like, it's so far out there that right. people forget it's part of America, even though you, and you guys have your own like indigenous population and language and everything. And it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's so cool. Um, I don't know. I, this, this is the sort of thing that excites me. Yeah, I'm like yeah. a nerd for geography and for oh, like this is awesome. language. Um, but the other thing, though, that I discovered is, well, actually, let's keep going. How did you find Commander then? Yeah, yeah. So, as I mentioned, I started in fourth edition. I remember cracking a Royal Assassin and buying cards <laughs> like Bizarre Baghdad. And uh, my brother and I, we were uh, we were playing a lot of kitchen table. And then he he built this deck called The Deck. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yeah, I'm but, familiar with the deck. Yeah, and so it had two Saturday Angels, you know, uh, two and modes. like every counter spell. <laughs> every counter spell, the, 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 the dual lands, things like that. And uh, it was a powerful deck. I mean, it was awesome. And so uh, that, that was the thing. We started collecting all these cards, uh, decided, okay, this is a thing that we wanted to do. Uh, you know, at the time, dual lands were in the uh, between $10 and $50 range. Uh, we scooped up a Time Twister. You know, I scooped a, a Jazam Jin. Oh my God. Uh, and a few other things. <laughs> and so this is me. Like, I'm uh, at the time, this is like, okay, so 94 ish, 95 ish. 
and pushing into high school, I started earning a little money uh, with uh, my family store that we have. It's a little mom and pop. And, you know, at the time, actually, Jazam the Gin was about 189 bucks. That's the number I remember very vividly. And uh, anyway, so this is, you know, before I left uh, 2002, this is the type of stuff that we had in the collection. And moving forward, I just started collecting. There was a, a pause in my uh, my playing, I guess you could say, because a lot of the kitchen table stuff I, I had. But I never really mm. stopped. I never really stopped collecting. I, I mm, stopped playing, but I never really stopped collecting. And I so, wish I had done that. I stopped cold and then came back and was like, what do you mean Jazam Jean is now $10,000? Yeah, it's something <laughs> insane. So now you're looking at 2002, but then I started, you know, after uh, after I graduated from West Point, 2006, uh, I'm still collecting. All I'm doing is really collecting. And if I go back to the island, because after I'm, I'm either deployed or go on a vacation, if I can get back to the island and play with buddies or friends that I have stateside, then sure. I would do that. And so this is all still kitchen table. And by the time right. 2013 hit, uh, I've I've amassed this collection of a lot of these <laughs> reserve lists and non-reserve list cards. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. I have this. I, I have basically two long boxes of a lot of singles. And mm. um, I, I realized after having uh, was was posted in uh, on the West Coast, uh, my assignment to the to the West Coast. Uh, that uh, I was introduced to this new concept of gaming and it wasn't kitchen table. So uh, <laughs> there was standard, you know, I did a little bit of like type one, type two, type 1.5, you know, I did that back then, you know, a long time ago. Uh, but then this, this, this new stuff of, of, um, of formats and discussions, <laughs> modern standard legacy, you know, whatever, <laughs> And then, like, what do you mean I can't play with these cards? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm playing kitchen table. I'm trying to like, you know, beat face of like four soul rings. And they're like, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> they're like, what are you doing, bro? Right. So I'm like, what? what's going on? So I, I happened upon uh, a, a play group that I ended up befriending pretty good. And um, my cousin in law, uh, back then, he was a friend of mine. Um, uh, and, and we were both posted to uh, join base Lewis McCord. Anyway, uh, so we're, we're playing and playing and then we get introduced to this thing called Commander. And I'm like, whoa, this is really cool. And I'm like, holy, holy cow. I have a lot of cards that I could just play with. Right. I, why not? Why not? And so um, one of my first uh, few decks, I think, was uh, Joyra of the Gitu. Mm. And um, so at the time uh, I, I, I was playing it. It wasn't my best deck. I, I played some other commanders at the time, but I was playing it. And, you know, I didn't really know anything about the ban list. I didn't really know anything about these things, right? And so I'm playing with this random dude in a pod. There's, like, two other guys, my cousin, me, uh, this random dude, and probably one other guy who's the, the friend of this other dude. Anyway, so I mentioned this dude being important because he he just freaking uh, blew up on me because <laughs> I, I I tried to play a road fire. I tried to play a road <laughs> fire with Joyro the Gitu. And and he goes crazy. He's like, wait, 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 hold on. This is banned. Gets all crazy, like pissed. Like, you're not supposed <laughs> to play that. What are you doing? I'm like, whoa, hold on. So, you know, he's what firing. Is banned? What does that mean? He's like firing all these <laughs> expletives at me. And I'm a military guy, so I'm going to fire back, you know? And, and I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. What's okay? You can't just talk to me like that. And then I, I go at it with him. And then he starts backing down. I'm like dude for a second just just realize that there are people out there that don't know anything about this ban list so I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry but you know what we're just gonna have to go with it right and <laughs> anyway that that that's that's one of the first few times where uh, i started realizing okay this this commander there's a format, formalized way to do this yeah, it's not yeah. just kitchen table it's not just kitchen table right <laughs> like okay i already removed the three saw rings in the deck i did that <laughs> so i'm like okay what well, that's okay <laughs> imagine playing kitchen table four saw rings and you're like just blasting the crap out of people okay dude i played a game of commander once where a friend of mine animated a soul ring and then cast right of replication on it uh -huh, so he uh -huh. had six soul rings <laughs> and that's when i was like there's a reason why this is a restricted card. Yeah. yeah. Cuz that's obscene. Like right. okay, sure, just have 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the in Go the ahead. in the in the kit when I was still doing kitchen table, yeah, I had the four soul rings, but I I also in a sense was 
uh, inadvertently introduce the commander uh, without knowing it. And so I would go mm. back and I'd still play a uh, kitchen table uh, with my, my friends and my brother and all that. And uh, commander, I think, uh, Kalia of the Vast, and I think the Mimeoplasm, I think they came out in 2011, right? Yeah. And so remember I, I mentioned that 2013 was when I was really first introduced to commander at, sure. in its pure form. Uh, but 2011, when these cards came out, you know, I'm I'm on I'm on eBay. I'm I'm checking out cool cards. I'm like, holy hell, this card can can when it attacks, like just you, get a free you get a free what? angel. And so <laughs> at the time, I think it might have been like 2012 when when I looked at these cards and, and I'm like, oh my god, you get a free angel out of this. And then I think Avison Restored came out, and mm -hmm. I can I can play Avison for free and. You have Aurelia and Grizzle the Bread for free, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm playing this like in in this kitchen table deck that I built, and my my brother and friends are like just hating me, and then I I, I built this Mimeoplasm kitchen table deck, which is really cool. Um, I think it had, I, it might have had a, uh, what is it? I think Blistering Firecat, and it, which is one colorless and three red, uh, and then I had Death Shadow. So like if I could play, if I could play the Mimeoplasm uh, after pitching Blistering Firecat uh, and Death Shadow, and if I could play it off of uh, let's say turn three Dark Ritual into some other stuff and then the uh, appropriate amount of colors, my Mimeoplasm could come in as a twenty twenty, and then <sighs> swing for lethal. Right? This is kitchen table still. Sure, sure. But that sure. was my that that was probably the the inadvertent uh, instance in where <laughs> I was actually introduced to commander without knowing it. That's see, I know that people like you exist. Like objectively, <laughs> like yeah, I understand that there are people who just buy cards and just put them in a deck, and they don't think about where did these cards come from, what are they meant for. Yeah, they're just I'm playing at home. The format I'm playing is cards I own. This is a card I own. This is just what we're gonna do. And like that's the vast majority of magic, and so many people don't understand yeah. that this like those of us who are sitting there like nattering about like hyper detailed format like distinctions <laughs> don't realize that like for eighty percent of the people out there, magic is the sixty cards that I just happen to have, yeah. and whatever booster pack I bought from Target or Walmart, and maybe this random card I got from a bulk box somewhere, and you know someone gave me this pre con for Christmas, and so now it's in the pot. You know, like random cards. Yeah, that they just build into a sixty card deck, and it's like, it's so easy to forget that that is the vast majority of how people play. Right, right, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's I don't amazing. know. It's like, yeah, because it's wild to me. Because like we're so used to looking at cards in like a hundred card format or singleton or commander focus or modern or legacy or whatever. And we're like very hyper-focused. Like this card mm -hmm. doesn't seem to fit in my format. It must be for something. Yeah. We don't realize that Watsy also just makes cards that are cool because there's people who just buy random cards and play them because they're cool and don't care. Yeah. And it's like, what? You don't care about formats? And like, no, dude, I'm just playing with my friends. It's, yeah. you know, Thursday night and we just jam random packs. Who cares? And and some of these unknown cards are just waiting to be broken. They're you know? busted. <laughs> yeah. Like some, some are just like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't start playing with that. Yeah, you I know. know. It, it's, I love that. I love that. The, I mean, that's like my goal is to remind people that these guys do exist yeah. and are also part of our community. But like, because I know that. Um, so can you tell me what was it that you showed to um, <laughs> Sheldon when you met him? Because I need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Sheldon has been real coy about this. I'm like, man, you did something to impress him. Because <laughs> that weekend gave us both Olivia and you. And I'm like, I know Olivia. but Actually, <laughs> Olivia might have been before that. I, I, I Actually, no. Yeah. It I think was Olivia me, Jim, that. and maybe Rachel. And Daquan. Yeah, you, Jim, Rachel, and... Da no, you, Jim, Kristen, and Daquan. Oh, okay. I know Kristen and... and, uh, and uh, or was it Kristen uh, and Ellie Olivia? Were, were separate I don't know. At, the, at the last, yeah. last you're right. one. Yeah. But it's you're like, right, who's this right. guy? Who's this guy, Greg Sablon? Like, why does yeah. he exist? Why is he important? Okay. Yeah, you and Daquan were like the two that I was just like, I have no idea who either <laughs> of you are. I had Daquan last week, so I've got you this week, so let's finish, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is how I think it transpired. At uh, at the time, uh, I think it was it was actually 20, 2019. Yeah. And um, there's this uh, there's this uh, it wasn't a, a actually no it was an SCG con. And the reason why mm. it's, it's so important was uh, because um, I had a booth. I had a booth for my wife. Uh, so right, I forgot to mention 
yeah. by the way, you guys need to know that Greg and his family are like altruist. And okay, I'm I'm going to cut you off. We will get back to the story in a second, but I really yeah, want yeah. to talk about this story. So s- Greg did this thing for the CAG members. Actually, you know what? We'll get to that. Why don't you tell us how you got here, and then we'll talk about yeah, 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 the yeah. amazing project you did. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I figured that would be part of Wait, the... Wait, actually, so I need to know, though. Uh-huh. So you married a, a Japanese... How did you get to Japan? Yeah, okay, so... So the military dropped you off in Yokohama and said, live here now? <laughs> <laughs> well, so the military has a, 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 a pretty consistent way of uh, putting places or people in places where they belong. And, uh, you know, it, it has something to do with, uh, hey, do you, do you want to go here? Is your, are you right for the job? Uh, can you actually make things happen? Stuff like that. So uh, Japan being here, that's my current assignment. Uh, but I've been posted to a lot of other places before and uh, deployed to a lot of other places overseas, Iraq, Afghanistan included, right? Well, Japan just happens to be my most current assignment, and that's where I'm at. Um as to how I got it, basically, I mean, it, it varies. It depends on kind of where, where you're at in the military. But at that point, when you do get assigned to wherever it is you go, the military has a, a point in place uh, for you to, to be there. Um, anyway, my wife's Japanese, uh, but she was born on and raised on the island of Guam, just like me. And oh, so cool. uh, the fact that she's Japanese, it's a plus because we're, if we're posted in Japan, as we are now, then she's the unofficial linguist, you know. Uh, of my of my team of my element right and so yeah. uh so she speaks english natively and she speaks japanese natively so that makes yeah. it probably yeah very easy <laughs> so <laughs> that's 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 that and and you know we've been married for a long time i uh, have three wonderful kids they're awesome and we just enjoy japan do they yeah. speak J- japanese i mean obviously they speak japanese they, they, go to school they speak some japanese but like because it's really my fault I think that happens in the military sometimes uh, because of the dads or, or the spouses. You speak English, so your kids are going to yeah. speak English. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's the, it's the forcing function, right? And so yeah. Anyway, um, that's that's Japan. That's how I got here, and that's my wife and my family. Um, going back to your question of of uh, okay, how did it all start? Well, yep. Um, my wife had a booth for our our business called Sublime MTG Alters. And, uh, yep. Talking a little bit about that. We've been doing the professional alters game for a little over six years. And, uh, we basically take, uh, references. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually. Yeah. So I want to ask about that first, because that is also fascinating to me. First off, did, did your wife play magic? No, but she's like a talented artist. Mm-hmm. And so how did you get into alters? How do you even find? Alters? Yeah. How did, how did that begin? So what happened yeah, was, at, uh, I think this was 2015 or so, 2016. I was going to I was going to graduate school in in a uh, UT Austin, and at the time uh, when I was there, I got really into Commander. I got really into Legacy. I was I was I was uh, I was going to GPS. Uh, I think yeah, they were called GPS at the time, Grand Prix. I was going there for Legacy, playing uh, you know Painter Servant, uh, Grindstone combo. Uh, which basically kind of ended up becoming my uh, my avatar name, you know, uh, that was yeah. huge, right? So I was playing, playing, playing Commander Legacy, all the cards that I, ha- I said I had before, I just made use of sure. them finally, and I, I loved it, right? And so uh, f- uh, fast forward uh, to 2015, because I was there starting in 2014, 2015 happened, and uh, I started seeing these new things in the magic um space of pimping out decks and mm-hmm. so a lot of people at the time were into foils or or if they were against foils they were very adamant about it and i <laughs> saw this other other way of pimping out because at the time i'm like oh man i don't think i could buy foils i'm not really interested in it but there might be this other avenue so uh, i was looking into altering cards that i owned but i didn't ask my wife because she didn't know anything mm-hmm. about that at the time I sure. went ahead and commissioned uh, a few altars from different artists. And after, com- you know, uh, after they arrived in the mail, at-, at a point in time, I was opening envelopes or packages or whatever. And my wife looked over my shoulder and was like, hey, what is that? Hmm. And I'm like, it's a magic card. I mean, you know, what do you expect? <laughs> and she's yeah. like, okay, well, then, um, she, you know, I started telling her that I paid someone. $15 to, to do an extension on the border. And she's like, are you serious? People pay 
other people you paid money for that. You pay money for this. You pay like, cause, cause you know, really if it's the card, the value you pay for the card. Great. But right. the actual amount of work that goes into it, like, Holy, Holy cow. Uh, she was flabbergasted. And, and so she was like, Hey, can, let me see if I could do something about this. And, and so <laughs> she was very artistic anyway. Um, you know, her whole family is artistic. We're, you know, we're into anime, um, sure. her, her sister and, and her father, like the father, her father's, a is a, uh, professional, uh, tempura chef on the Island. Uh, so they know how oh. to cook. They, they all know how to do all these things with their hands, you know, uh, creatively. Right. And so sure. she took, uh, took a liking to the idea of altering and started, started <laughs> going off with it. And, um, you know, she did that for a good year. Uh, so this is 2016, now 2017. And then my sister-in-law, Kamiko, who did your altar, uh, mm -hmm. she came on on our team and we did, you know, we didn't do an interview or anything. It's like, hey, you know, she was out of a job at the time. Um, so she was looking for some work and she's like, hey, this is this the thing that Michiko is doing. What, what do you think? Is this something I could do? And, you know, uh, so we're talking about it, whatever. And then Kamiko was like, you know what? I think I could do this. So she actually... Some of her very first altars are actually extremely impressive. Anyway, so Michiko yeah, is my wife, and then her sister is Kamiko. They're both part of the Sablon MTG Altars team, and we were having a good time basically uh, by the time 2019 hit. Sure. So, so you guys had a booth at SCG Con. Yeah. Fly, yep. fly to the States and set up, and you're like, hey, guys, I can paint your thing. Oh, no, no. We weren't on Guam at the time. We were actually already, like, I, I was at Texas for UT Austin oh. uh, okay, in 2016, fine. and then I moved to uh, West Point to go teach. So oh, at the academy, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So at the academy, so then it wouldn't have been that far for you to go to uh, the con after all. No, not at all. Right there, not at all. Yeah. So from 2016 to 2019, I was actually teaching at the United States Military Academy. Uh, I was teaching in the Department of Physics and Nuclear Engineering. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm like, is this the part where it says, "And they were called the Top Guns"? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably wrong branch because that's the Navy, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> but so I, I, I went there to teach and had a blast but in the process you know my 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 wife's uh page alters page uh was ramping up we had some decent clients from from texas we started getting a following anyway um i i saw a posting by um uh by, by scg they're like hey look if you want to uh set up a boat a booth if you're a professional alter alterist uh you know reach out and uh you know, set up a booth. And I did, I said it great. Awesome. Before I went out there though, a friend of mine who was an L4 jobs, L4 judge, they don't, they don't have L4s anymore, but apparently they mm. used to have L4, L5. Yeah. L5, L5 judge is like Sheldon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, the big boss L4 is like a huge, like continent wide level judge, you know? It's like yeah. So he was an L4 judge. He was an L4 judge at, at one point in time. He's still a judge now, but, uh, so he, he, he was like, Hey, look, you're going to SCG con. That's great. Before you go, you need to make sure because we were playing some commander by that time. Uh, he's like, before you go, you need to make sure you go talk to to Sheldon. And I'm like, Sheldon? What's a Sheldon? Yeah, what's a Sheldon? <laughs> and and so I actually I talked to a few other uh, folks that have asked me on the show about the same story. But it's like, okay, um, there's a commander, four man, and guess who's in charge of it? It's this guy named Sheldon. And of course he has, his, he has his folks on the RC and the CAG. And, and I didn't know that at the time. Anyway. So he's like, make sure you go and seek uh, Sheldon. You know, I'm pretty sure he's going to be there. I think I've seen him on the guest list. Make sure you make contact with him. And then, you know, you, you could talk about commander. And so it was really cool because uh, the booth and basically if you're a vendor or, or any special guest at SCG con, they have the opportunity to invite you to what's called an after party. And you, you've, you've probably been to some of those. Anyway, sure. so the after party was like, hey, look, all these people basically drafting packs, playing, singing, just on, hanging out, hanging out, you know, uh, consuming alcohol, making fools of themselves, playing games, stuff like that. This is all happening. And I met Sheldon for the first time. And I'm like, hey, sir, a buddy of mine wanted me uh, wanted, uh, wanted me to reach out to you. And he said you were uh, retired Air Force. Uh, I wanted to connect. This, this, and this. We had a blast just talking. We didn't actually get to play games, but we started talking about our time in the military. Uh, about yeah, that's the one thing. Sheldon loves military folk who play magic. Yeah. That's like one of his favorite things. Yeah. And so that's kind of how it started off. But then 
um, it, nothing really materialized as to whether or not I would even be on the CAG or anything. The conversation didn't, wasn't even brought up at the time. So, but how it, it began was there was a Facebook post that he uh, put out maybe a few months after that. And he's like, Hey, if you're, a, if you're someone aspiring to support the, the RC and the CAG or, or might have content that we might be interested in, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm putting my, my, my line open. And so I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Uh, maybe I can reach out to Sheldon. I'll friend him on Facebook, send him a, uh, you know, a friend request and, uh, and say I'm interested. But before I did that, I was like, okay, this is the military person to me. Just like a lot of other military people that you probably would meet is you don't go in with a proposal <laughs> without having something, you know, like, like a solution to, to a pro problem. Right. Right. But it wasn't a problem. It's it's just a it, it was an advertisement seeking out opportunity, and I was like, okay, cool, let me do this. So I I, I in I think in his in his post it was more like, what do you think you could bring, and how how can you help? And so right. I was like, okay, let me let me see what I can do, and I literally put together like a three slide presentation, <laughs> and and this is even before I pinged him because I'm like, okay, you know what? I I was I was up at night. I saw this post. I think I, I was at uh, I was at West Point at the time, and um, I saw this post. I'm like, okay, Sheldon was really cool. That's that's one and two. I don't think I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight unless I think I can put something <laughs> together in the next two hours. <laughs> and I was really fired up about. It. I was really excited. And uh, two hours later, I put together this three slide presentation. And how? What is it that I would bring to the community? Well mainly two things. I have two primary goals and I always say this on my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash the painter center. That's how you can find me. But I always say this on my stream. My two primary goals include, uh, basically connecting the military community or connecting the alters community. Right. Mm. And so this is kind of the basis for, for, for all of that is when I presented the slideshow, it was, Hey, Sheldon, sir, this is what I believe I can bring. I have, I have two communities that that I belong to, and I would like to bring them into uh, the the commander of uh, uh, sphere. You know, sphere, and this is what I what I do. And so I I started talking about different things in the slides, like oh hey I know a lot of military people already. They play magic. If if people that are are in the military they go TDY temporary duty or they do a permanent change of station, you know when they leave an assignment go to another assignment. There's always players all over the place. And lo and behold, right, there, there are, there's a, a lot of these folks that are out there that exist. And, you know, there's this sort of uh, idea that, um, you know, people in the military don't really do anything but kick down, you know, kick down doors and take names. And right. that's not really what the military is about. You know, we have other objectives, we have other priorities, we have other things that, that, that we have to fall in line in terms of things sure. like national policy, whatever. Uh, but uh, when we're on our downtime and we want to just hang out and, and do our hobbies, you know, one of them could be magic and, and we we're out there. And so that was one part, right. Is connecting the military. But two yeah, one thing I've learned about like talking to military folk, especially is that like, cause I remember in the old days there was a lot of D and D players and they would just be like, you know, yeah. hiking out in like Bosnia or whatever with their like player's handbook in their mm -hmm. backpack and just carrying their stuff with them wherever they go. And when Magic came out, they're like, you know how much easier it is to carry a 60-card deck than it is to carry three books, a pad of paper, and some dice? And I'm like, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that that was that was that community, right? Like, uh, I would see these care packages come in from WotC where, you know, I'm deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan. And it's like, hey, here's some stuff and play with it. And I'm like, WotC does this? That's cool. But how can I, how can I do more of that kind of thing? How can I sure. do more? So that was one thing. And then the second thing was the altars community, right? Uh, what is, what do I bring to the table that is related to the altars community? Well, just besides the fact that my wife and her sister do altars, uh, I have a growing relationship, professional relationship with a lot of these artists uh, who I believe have basically entered the sphere, as you, as you say, uh, in, in, in doing things that are, or painting on cards that are oh, yeah. almost exclusively commander. Right. Well, yeah, because I like, think about it. Yeah, there used to be just basically Eric Klug and like some other folks, and now you can't like throw. <laughs> and now you, it feels like there's just infinite altruists out there who are like, you know, people like 
uh, Sir Proxy or ALK Alters or, you know, your guys. It, it just feels like there's so many <laughs> cool proxy artists out there yeah, yeah. who are making amazing alters, either digitally artists or like doing actual hand painting. And it's it's wild, especially in Commander, where we don't have, you know, the kind of restrictions that uh, 60 card players do on what's legal in our format. Yeah. In Commander, every card you have could be altered and nobody's going to care. Yeah. You know? You, you mentioned proxy. I just want to make sure there's a distinction between what well, we do and, and, and not. And so... Yes. Proxying and altering are different. I've discussed this before. Yes. I... No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sensitive uh, to that. I just want to make sure... Make you know, like, you know. I'm not trying to imply anything. It just Sir Proxy is an alterist that yeah. I do enjoy because he makes these cool <laughs> minimalist things. But sometimes it's it's easy to get them mixed up. But we're not talking counterfeit. We're talking like just artistic re-renderings yes, of yes. cards. Yes, yes. Right on. Um, so, but anyway, that's so how yeah, it all you've began. got the alterist artists. Yeah, so the, the <laughs> alterist community, that's 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 in my kit, right? So I got the, the, sure. the two things, the military and the alterist community. I put this on a slideshow, shoot it to, 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 to Sheldon, and apparently he loves it. And and, and again, remember I, I said that before I, I even shot him a PM, I had to prepare all this ahead of time. <laughs> I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to be one of those like window shoppers like, hey, Sheldon, let me know what I can do, you know, how I can help, like. You know what? If people go in like that, they're they're already wrong. Because yeah, like Sheldon, I, puts out, Sheldon puts out that this is this is what we're looking for. If you roll in and you don't have a plan, like you're just you're just gonna you're a jerk. Yeah, like if you say how can I help, you yeah. can't. Yeah, because like if you don't already come in with something, you're not gonna be helpful. You either and, know how you can help or you don't. Exactly. And so this is yeah. this is where I was at. And Sheldon loved it, uh, and 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 things were awesome. Um, I think uh, several months later, there was, uh, I think it was a command fest. And mm. so this is, I think, one of the first few instances where uh, WotC really made it a point to, to have Commander being played primarily, you know, if, if not entirely. It was at, the at, first at time, actually. Yeah, and that was at, uh, that was at Richmond. Uh, and so I was going to uh, um, uh, some military, military training at the time. I was already away from the academy because uh, I, uh, I had left. But then I was going, uh, I went to Command Fest Richmond because it was there. And then I met back up with, with Sheldon. And, and and so he was like, hey. So he reached out to me. He's like, hey, Greg, uh, we're actually pretty excited about you coming out here. That's great. Uh, can you meet up with us? And so um, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And because uh, I didn't really know where this is going to go eventually. Uh, yeah. But I think there was conversations where it, it had something to do with like, hey, um, we like what your stuff, but, uh, we're not sure quite yet, uh, how to, how to do it or, or the timeline to implement it. Um, but we're looking at you as being a potential member of the commander advisor group. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. And so like, I started, you know, thinking about all these things and what I need to do. And so, um, I met up with them in Com command fest, Richmond. I, I had a good time, had conversations with them, play games, play games with other people. And, uh, he's like, yeah, Greg, uh, welcome to the team. And I'm like, this is yeah. awesome. And so I guess we, we had good vibes going on. He introduced me to Olivia at the time because I think she was there. And yes. we, I think she was the only one of us who was actually there because that was before I traveled to the other side of the country for these things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so there was this meeting that, that was happening. And I'm not sure if, if this this kind of, you know, uh, uh, hammered the final nail in the coffin of me being part of the CAG. But there's this other meeting that was happening and and uh, basically a lot of people were talking about magic and what did they think about the format? And then I started putting a bunch of stuff out there because no one wants to speak. And that, that's one thing that's kind of interesting is is uh, when you get put into a group of people, right? Uh, most of the time, people are shy. They don't want to speak up. They don't want to do anything. They want to lead. Mm -hmm. They want to follow, right? And so the military, at least a lot of people in the military, they tend to to have this uh, this presence, so to speak that you, you would be able to lead more than follow. Anyway, I, I started leading conversations and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting because I'm the only one talking, but then people started getting interested. Anyway, this is all happening. That being said, Command Fest over, um, uh, fast forward to 2020. And then um, Sheldon's like, hey, we're not sure when we want to, uh, to, to, to release uh, the information about you being on the CAG yet, um, you know, but we'll, we'll give you an idea. And I'm like, okay, cool, no problem, you know, no, no, uh, yeah. no, no stress, no rush, no pressure, whatever no rush. You need. And yeah. so 2020 happened, and I told uh, Sheldon that I wasn't comfortable yet uh, 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 having my name being broadcasted out there because I was getting to my new job and things are gonna get crazy. I don't really know how effective I could be to be, to be able to support. 
and sure. then there, uh, then COVID happened, and then that year became a void, right? This big black, yeah, sure black hole of of everything, anything and everything, social life, whatever. Now social yeah. media blew up, but things that happened in 2020, I, I kind of forgot. You know, look and as so, far as I'm concerned, last year is still 2019. <laughs> right, right, because 2021 was also sort of a void, it was completely of black hole. just. Ne- it was a non-entity. It was like just time stop, right? Like, yeah. who knows? And and so uh, 2021 finally happened and Sheldon said, hey, look, uh, we're ready to release your name as being part of the CAG and we're excited. So uh, well, uh, again, uh, let's let's uh, let's see what we can do and, and work together. So I was like, okay, great. Good timing. 2021 wasn't a, ba- a bad thing um, uh, for me to get in officially. And then that's when my name was released. Yeah. So let's talk about this for a second. What do you think about the CAG now that you've been here for about a year or so? Yeah. Uh, well, so uh, the CAG, I guess you could say. Or like I, our meetings in general or yeah. how effective we are as a body. I, I, I don't know. I, and and the, the really cool thing about this this CAG is it's very diverse, right? Uh, mm. You have people from different walks of life. They're in different parts of the world, Europe. Japan, me, the yeah. rest of the United States and Canada, right? Um, you know, yes. I don't know if there's discussion as to whether or not there's going to be someone in the in the in the Central and South Americas, right, or Africa. I don't know, but these things. I are mean, up. I know that they would really like to expand beyond just you know majority English speaking countries, right? Yeah, yeah, and so I think I think it's awesome the fact that it's extremely diverse. There's a lot of people again like i said with different perspectives different backgrounds and they all bring something to the table right um mm. like shivam you know you're one of those de- dissenting voices <laughs> you know you're like oh you know something gets bought up and you and then you, you you have you put it on its head you know and it's like this is what i think and i'm like okay this is how shivam operates uh you know and I acknowledge that, you know, people have different perspectives on things. Look, they didn't bring me there to sit quietly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so I'm like, okay, where do I belong in all this? Uh, cause I have, I have a voice, I have an opinion. I'm that, I'm that unknown guy that doesn't really exist. The, the one dude that has no followership. Right. And it's like, okay, what do I bring to the table? So, you know, I'm realizing everyone's magnitude and gravity and all of this. Cause they have, they have their backgrounds and I'm, I'm putting my stuff out there. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I at first I was a little bit um, I was a little bit concerned as to the content and and uh, I guess you could say uh, the you know the execution of these meetings, right? Is okay. Sometimes <laughs> they take forever. You know, what's the point? You know, do we do, do we do we get online and and do we go webcam? Do we you know do we do we talk about these issues and then like things start no it's a lot of just developing. essay writing is what it is yeah there's a lot of development developments going on and 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 i'm like okay this is starting to shape into something pretty interesting and it's a function all of these meetings and all of these rolling conversations that we have within the the the, the joint discussion channel on our discord uh they're they're all developing they're evolving and so yeah. it allows ba- you know it's it's based on on what's what's in the now right it's everything's social yeah. media you know uh technology is increasing or making a lot of our lives easier you know beneficial to us and so the the meetings they, they they've they've done a pretty good job of of uh you know being shaped by that and so um i like that we're on discord we're, t- we're chatting about things uh some people don't really speak up some people do more than others and you know that's just life you know uh, people have have different things going on um, I wish the CAG would be more or would be more willing to talk more because uh, there's some people that don't really speak as much. And I'm like, OK, so what's the point of the CAG? Well, the, it, you know, that's the, true. Like yeah. there's definitely like people who are like much less interactive in the group meetings. But I think a lot of what they're there for is specialized question answering purposes that mm. like – Sheldon and Toby and friends want to have direct access to, to be able to talk to these people. Yeah. So it's like, not necessarily that they want to join in the group effort, but they're still contributing in a different way. It took me a while to get around to that idea too. Like, Mm. Oh, these people have a lot of value. It's just, we're not seeing it because they're being spoken to directly and it's just easier for them to be within the confines of the group. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, not everybody's going to be like me. Who's got an opinion on every last goddamn thing. These people want to talk about, (laughs) but (laughs) 
you know, yeah. we don't need 30 of me. <laughs> right, right, right. And of course, people have their own personal lives to deal with, sure. personal lives to deal with. So that varies, and I understand that. And that's that's totally fine. I mean, just, just like everything else in life, right? It, um, sometimes, you know, things just work out the way they do, and, and it's fine, you know? Um, mm. But yeah, no, that was, uh, th- that's something I, I, I observed. Um, I, I like the content. I like the discussions. You know, um, I, there's driving questions that are being asked and I'm, I'm reciprocating on, on that end. Uh, I think the last, that, that one meeting that we had where it was the, it was the, uh, uh, what, what is it? A breakout session where it mm. just had the four of, of the folks, like one RC member and then three CAG members. Yes. Uh, I thought that was actually pretty interesting because, uh, in, instead of, um, uh, of, of doing me the, yelling and you sitting there, yeah, the long meeting, you know, where everyone's just kind of type, you know, clacking at the keyboards. Like this is like <laughs> actual dialogue physically with someone across the world talking about magic and what they, what we believe are, are the issues or problems or concerns. And uh, yeah. that was great. Gavin, Gavin was the one, um, uh, Gavin, Gavin Dugan was the one that facilitated my, my uh, last uh, breakout. And so that, yeah. I thought that was value added for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good idea. I I mean, you did come in, you guys joined the group a little bit after a lot of our real hefty like meetings happened early on when we were talking about rules changes or about like, we use like when, for instance, when some like Paradox Engine or like, you know, <laughs> Flash or whatever were banned, we had lengthy meetings that were like, real like everybody is writing out a lengthy essay in defense or in or against it it was fantastic i mean it was really really interesting but i think that expanding the cag and having more perspectives is just so much better and having like i miss having a formal meeting but i also understand why they don't because you know folks like you and charlotte are on the wrong side of the world from the rest of us so it makes it hard timing wise but it's just such a, a value add to the four dudes on the rules committee themselves yep. to be able to talk to us about our specific, um, you know, point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we're getting close to the end here, but before we do, I want to talk about a couple of things. Yeah. One first off is that <laughs> one of the coolest things you did was when you joined the keg, because you're an altruist, you went and got a whole collection of altruists to come and do stuff for us. Yeah. And <laughs> Kumiko, your sister-in-law, took one of my favorite characters from my favorite anime, Belle Dandy from Oh My Goddess, and put her on Titania for me. And it's like framed on my house now yeah, yeah. in my uh, pile of cards that are just like, I've got these handful of cards that have either been altered or like super rare or super cool for me. Yeah, yeah. And that is now up on my wall of like awesome things because it's literally the most perfect replication of Belle Dandy. It feels like a cell. Right. It, so authentically cool and that's like one of the sweetest things i think anybody's ever given to me so i'm thanking you publicly here and i thanked her directly and like dude that's such a sick project yeah no it's it was amazing so again this goes back to what do i bring to the table right that my second goal of connecting to all the community you know it's it felt like a neighbor moved in and instead of bringing you an apple pie they bring you a bunch of really sweet altars and they're like (laughs) okay let's go (laughs) yeah yeah for real and so I, I was like, okay, what do I bring to the table? This might be something cool. You know, I, I asked the RC and the CAG uh, who their favorite commanders were. And without them knowing it, I, I you know, the gears are grinding. I'm thinking, okay, I know what I got to do with this. Alters, let's, 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 let's hype it up. And so um, I, because I already had a, a pretty decent uh, connection with the alters community and the artists there, I reached out to basically... Um, 14 other different artists, right? So I already had my wife and her sister and her sister. They were the two artists that were part of the 16. I reached out to 14 different artists. This is people all over the world. And so if you go on the mtgcommander.net uh, site, there was a, uh, I actually published an article, uh, but also there was a, a separate link there where it shows a full gallery of all the altars. And so uh, we have people from Italy. We have people from France, from Australia. Um, I think uh, one of them is in, in Denmark. Um, and, and then, of course, my, my wife in Japan, my, my sister-in-law in Guam, there's a lot of uh, U.S. artists, all that. 16 of them, anyway, did a personalized altar for a member of the Rules Committee or the Commander Rides Group. And so, you know, you might think, okay, well, what's the point? Well, the point is goal number two. How do I connect the altars community with the RC and the CAG and the rest of the Commander community? 
um, put it, there's a face, there's a face of alters. I don't know if that's, if that's my face, I don't know, but there's a lot of these artists that should be recognized and should be highlighted because of the work that they do. The commander community definitely benefits from the existence of these folks because there's a way to personalize decks. Commanders, sometimes they just need to get some pimp. You know, they get need to get mm-hmm. some flash, right? So I was talking about like foils and flashiness back back in 2014, 2016 timeframe. And after having been impressed by alters doing altered work, a hand-painted work on cards, uh, why not show that more in the community? And so in a sense, I feel like Watsi, maybe this wasn't the case, but um, there's all these things that are happening with professional alters artists. Uh, and and Watsi putting out things like secret layers. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> At first I was a little bit weirded out by it, but yeah, it's but, like, no, they're, they're nosing in on my business. <laughs> well, yeah, in a sense. Yes. But at the same time, I'm like, look, this is Watsi. They could do whatever they want. They have the op, they have the full breadth and depth to be able to, to change art on cards and print them to their, to, you know, to their heart's content. That's all good. Secret layers. They're awesome. At first I was a little weirded out, but anyway, I'm like, okay, this is a way to continue to uh, showcase uh, some of the potential in in making your commander decks look awesome. And so, uh, you know, great thing because these artists were willing to do it. You know, they did a pro bono. Um, and it's, it's like, wild. you know, throw it out there. You know, if, if their names get thrown, uh, you know, get, get or get, get shown in some form or fashion on the internet, whatever, uh, where they could, you know, this is the work that they did for the CAG. It's out there in the open. It's public knowledge now. And it exists. Some people might not know it exists until now. And so great, great stuff. Yeah. Kamiko did a great job for you. Um, I know. Dude, every time I look at it, I'm just blown away. Because, oh my God, this is one of my favorite animes of all time. Yeah. And it is, it is uncanny how perfect that representation is. It's like yeah. ridiculous. It's so pretty. Right. Um, and I, I wish I had been smarter and just said Tuvasa instead of Titania uh-huh. because then it would have been like, even because that picture I had Baldani has wings and I'm like, Oh, that would have been so perfect for Tuvasa, but it's okay. Cause I, I adore that. It's one of the <laughs> coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. Cause Tuvasa is blue like, and green. So yeah, it, right. the colors on the on the art are blue and green and then white. Exactly. And I was like, why did I pick a mono green one for this? But um, yours, though, was sick. It looks like 90s X-Men artwork. It's like. Yeah, yeah. Super... It's after oh, it's, so cool. it's after Jim Lee's iconic uh, X- X-Men cover with Wolverine, uh, you know, and it's on Yidris. Yidris. Yeah, it looks... So it's a foil because that's the only printed copy of Yidris. And so how do you, how do you make foils? How do you paint on a foil? It's so hard. Yeah. Long story short, lots of work, lots of time and lots of precision and uh, clearly dedication. And so my wife did that for me. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be a selfish dude and ask another artist to, to paint yeah. for me. Cause I'm yeah. not like that. I'm not like that. <laughs> anyway. So my wife did it for me. You know, she didn't get any money out of it. But I, I thanked her profusely, and I play, it, <laughs> I play it, I play it on my stream every so often, and so that's the kind I of thing. Say, yeah, my personal favorite one is uh, the Captain Magic Alter did the uh, Arixmathies, yeah. looking like a classic octopus with this island coming out the top. It, yeah, absolutely sick. Yeah, it's a lot of these. Like- a lot of these alters are mostly reference work, and so. I won't really discuss uh, that the legitimacy of, of why it should and shouldn't be reference work. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It yeah. is what it is. It's cool. It is what Who it cares? is. It's cool. You know, there's hours and hours of work being poured into these things. Yeah, and like this. None of these were like it, yeah. easy. They're they're not. And so I don't remember how long Kamiko worked on yours, but the the you, you've you've said it yourself several times already that that it's 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 a very perfect rendition of of the reference. Oh my god, it's perfect. And that's what we aim for in Sublon MTG Ultras. We aim for that. And so a lot of these other artists that were part of the project, they also aim for that. They aim for perfection. And uh you can see it in the intricate details of of cards like the one done for Jim, right? It's a Legend of Zelda artwork. Oh god, that one know, looks sick. Uh done by Tor- Tori a- uh, Tori Abdel <laughs> of uh, Magic Fantasy Ultras. Um, Rachel Weeks is Feldegriff, the one in the in the flavor that looks like a, a Dr. Seuss yes. thing. Yep, Dr. Seuss. So we have we have an artist out there. His name is uh, MRB Michael Michael Beausoleil did some great work on that. He does uh, his own rhymes in the magic flavors to be able to deliver it exactly as what you want. 
and then you know a, a lot of these other artists they're again they're from different parts of the country and the u.s and, and all over the world it's yeah. just a matter of reaching out to them to them right and yeah. so um if 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 the listeners are, are listening on this they should check out the the commander website because on on the commander website uh, there is a, a link there that can take you to yeah, all in the Yeah, in the community section, in the community voices area, yes. there's an article that's up there and it's got uh, all the pictures of the the cards that we got and they all just look stunning. Yeah, I and think, cool. I, I literally, I, I believe literally it is the most recent post on the Commander RC yeah. page called I mean, the We don't know when this will go up and if they'll change it or not. So it's just like, it's there, you'll find it. Yeah, it's there, you'll find it. It's great. Um, yeah. Okay, that's that. I wonder if you have another moment to speak about one more thing. Yeah, hit me. Okay, so uh, there's the other project that I was working on. This is goal number one now. Remember, goal number one is all about the military. Goal number two was was the Alters project. So Alters project number two, that was, okay, how can I make an impact immediately with the CAG NRC? Goal number two is an enduring goal. It's a mission of mine that is it aims to connect the military, right? And so... Uh, the other thing I really want to highlight while we're, we're talking on the podcast, uh, Shivam, uh, thank you again, of course, but is this this new group that I created. And and it's yeah. not even really a group. It's more of a concept, right? Um, yeah. We've, uh, myself and six other uh, co-admins, co-founders, we're calling ourselves part of the board of directors, et cetera, whatever. Uh, we created this thing called the Alliance of Military Magic Players. So if you, if you think about what that stands for, it stands for AMMP. It's, it's the acronym abbreviated uh, AMMP. It sounds kind of cool. Military people love them some acronyms. Yeah, you, you can't you can't <laughs> escape it. So the Alliance of Military Magic Players, what is it? Well, at first I thought it was going to be about commander, but it's it's actually a lot more than that. So we've, we've brought in our, 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 our scope uh, to include all the other formats. And what does it do? Well, you know, we try to consistently promote healthy gameplay. Uh, we inspire format discussions. We talk about commander. We talk about EDH or, you know, modern, standard, vintage, sure. legacy, whatever. Uh, we also are trying to make sure that we can connect to as many of these different military content creators that are out there. You know, you might have heard of uh, some uh, other names like uh, Beth, Queen of Cardboard, right? Mm. She's done a lot of great work in the in the stream, uh, the streaming environment on Twitch. And she always does a lot of these, um, uh, you know, charity work you know there, there's always stuff like the, the military community like we uh i guess you could say you know we have a mission in mind right and our off time we have hobbies you know that's cool right but you know part of being part of part of being part of the military is you're actually giving something more than yourself right hmm. you're you're devoting your or you're putting your life on the line in service of the country right and it, it doesn't matter if we're in conflict right now Right or for Red War overseas, whatever. Uh, if we are called to do something, we 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 will be at the nation's call to do it. Right, and so um, in in a sense, this amp, this group, this concept, it's all about doing something greater than ourselves because mm -hmm. we know that this community exists and we want to connect them. And so mm -hmm. we have a space on Facebook. We're 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 we're, we're growing. We're we're on basically all the social media platforms that you can think of. Right. And so if there's a listener or, or whatever that's listening in on this and you're interested in, in terms of, of um, connecting with the, the folks like ourselves, myself being on the CAG and these other uh, creators and, and also the commander community, uh, at least that's part of it, is we're out there and we, we want to be able to, to do that more. Hmm. I'll, I'll pause let's, there if you have any uh, concerns or questions. Well, no, I mean, because that, that's a really important, uh, you know, idea to have because then you can use that to help spur... Um, healthy behaviors mm -hmm. and healthy mental states and, you know, get your aggression out through gaming yeah. or whatever it is, you know, just good. Like, I think that this hobby we have has got a lot of valid points to it. And one of the best, best is providing a social atmosphere for people and grease for people to be able to communicate and mm -hmm. meet up. Cause like some folks have like social anxiety or just like hard times talking to other people. Yeah. But when we sit down playing magic, at least here's an already, open invitation for us to be able to share something and get in there. And then you can open up and start bonding and relaxing and being able to, you know, work on yourself and be healthier. And it gives you a medium by which to communicate. So I think having this kind of group and having this kind of effort to be able to help people, you know, find each other is really important <clears throat> and worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, whether you're in the Navy, you're, you're playing on, 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 on ships, you know, there's decks uh, yeah, of tournaments, you know, things like that. 
you know, you're in the army deployed, you know, to, to some overseas uh, con- contingency environment. Yeah, man, can you imagine being stuck yeah. on like a submarine for six months and being like, well, at least I got my magic deck. <laughs> and something. Yeah, stuck yeah. Here under the water for a hundred years. That's one thing that I can't handle. I, I, I don't know how Navy dudes can do it and just be stuck in like a 20 foot tube for a year and a half, 400 feet under the sea and being like, well, this is my life now. Yeah. 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 You know, everyone, everyone has their different, uh, different, you know, goings in, right. Like, you know, why, why are they, why do they do these things? Why did they join the Navy? Why did they join the air force, the army? Right. (laughs) Um, but yeah, amp, amp is great. Amp is great. Alliance of military magic players. Uh, my co-founders include, um, I have an active duty Marine, uh, he's an, I think he's an E7. I have an active duty Navy guy. He's an E8. Um, these E's basically, it just means rank. Yeah. Um, and so I have an Air Force you know, guy who's been in charge of my Discord channel. Do you know Ian channel. Dixon? Yes. Uh, I friend him. In, I, I, I believe we're friends on Twitter. Uh, yeah. And I've reached out to him on, on occasion. I think I had him on my channel once. Uh, yeah. But, Dixon's uh, awesome. Yeah. Very good friend of mine. He's actually active duty army too. Yeah. He's in he's Hawaii like, right now. If, if he's in Hawaii in Pearl Harbor. But yeah. yeah, he's somebody you should you should get to know if you don't know better. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Have him on the show too. But yeah, man, this is a great project, and I wish you all success with it. I think it's awesome, and I think it's a cool initiative. But I love your altars, and I think I want to uh, once again extend my thank yous to your wife and her sister. Dude, your art is so sick. Every time <laughs> you post something on Twitter, I always retweet it because I'm like, this this is like sweet. Didn't you guys do like one like double face card or something that had like this linked artwork? Yeah. So I think like... so I think we were actually so the, the, sometimes you see alter artists they do these panoramas where it's like two cards. Yeah. And two, That's right. So, I was for, so we we we've done that. We've done that. But I think we we're probably the first to do something even cooler and better. And uh, my <laughs> wife my wife's actually uh, done it twice already. Where she'll have uh, basically they're on top of each other. Yeah, dude, it looks and so it's, sick. It's, it's like upside one, you know. Basically, if you look at it, the art, they're they're like on top of each other. Uh, yeah. And, and so we've done that on occasion, um, where it, it connects from top end to bottom end. And so that's one thing that really looks cool that my wife did. Another thing that my wife did also was, that was awesome. So we, we took the idea of a panorama, which was. Yeah, I need to have her on my show. Cool. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so like to, to be able to, to do something new, like panoramic type alters, they were around for a while. Right. That's cool. Like we've done those before. But then we're like, OK, what do we do to, to make it make even more cool? And so we did that the top to bottom end. And then we did. Uh, we did this other thing and, and I'll, I'll send you the picture later so you could gawk at it. But um, it's, it, it was using, I think the card was called windfall and mm. uh, this other card called winds of change. Right. Mm. So you have a blue and red. And, and when you look at it, um, it's, it's kind of a panorama, but as you, as you rotate it, it's, it's basically upright in one position all the time. So it's like a, a playing card. Yes. In the way like Jack is always upright no matter which side you're looking at. Yes. So like if you put it together, you could look at it in, in that fashion. And, and it was That's in, sweet. in the in the flavor of Alice in Wonderland. And so. Oh, that's the coolest one. I remember that one. Yeah. Man, I was so. Yeah. Anyways, that stuff is sick, man. You need to repost this stuff on Twitter, like all your old ones, so I can just share them again. Because I, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I've and caught I, a, I need to have I've you guys a... do some more for me. Um, but. One thing I will end with, though, is that the coolest thing ever is before we even got to really know each other, you went and did me the yes. biggest favor anyone's ever done and, like, and hunted it. down <laughs> a bunch of Macross Mecha for me that I've been looking for for like 15 years to finish <laughs> off this collection. And now they're all posed in my room and it's like the great, every time I look at it, I'm like, Greg, thank you. And I've got the anime <laughs> tears pouring down my face. But um Oh man! Yeah, man. I was hoping you were going to talk about that. I'm glad you did, dude. It's the greatest thing anybody's ever done for me. It's like <laughs> it helped me finish the. Because as a collector, uh, when you have a hole in your collection, it hurts your soul. Yeah. So yes. knowing that I have the full thing now, oh my god! They just put out Shorikai, the stupid mecha vehicle lord for uh-huh. the Kamigawa set. Finally, I have something that I can get your wife to alter into an SDF one for Macross. Yes, I'm done. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Oh no! I'm glad oh. you mentioned that because I was like, "Oh man, I was. I'm, I wonder if she's gonna mention it." Because oh, hell yeah, man! Cool. It's like every time I look at those damn things, I'm like, 
my dude helped me get those. That's awesome. See, this is this, okay, is, where, this is where I'm at. It's it's all about it's all about doing something more than yourself. You know, it's like, can yeah, I make you know this happen? Can I make an impact? It is immediate. You know, I am. I am. <laughs> That is my entire goal in life. It's to do things for other people so that they always feel good when they think about me. But um, with that in mind, though, if people wanted to find you, find your stuff, find your altruist collection, where could they go? How could they find you? Yeah, thank you for asking, Shivam. So on Facebook, uh, don't try to find me. You probably will find me. But where I would like you to find me is Sublon MTG Alters. Uh, that's where my uh, my wife and her sister do the, the hand-painted works. Uh, we're also on Instagram. We're also on Twitter, and I'm trying to get them to to get Twitch going. So Sablan MTG Alters, S A B L A N MTG Alters. We can be found on all those relevant social media platforms already. Uh, as to my personal work, I can be found on Twitter at my name Gregory Sablan. Uh, but also, uh, I'm on uh, uh, Twitch as well as the Painter Servant. And so you can find me on Twitch, Twitch TV slash the Painter Servant. And we all we do there is get people like yourself, Shivam, to come on the channel and play commander. But I also connect again, like I said, with altars, enthusiasts, artists, and military folk. So I have people from all kinds of places in the world with those backgrounds on the channel playing. Sometimes I don't even know these folks going in. If they're military, <laughs> there's a good chance that they're decent people. And if they show up on my show, they're gonna they're not gonna be total jerks. And so well, that's a hope at least, right? Yeah, that is the hope. And, and so far it's pretty true. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's where you can find me. I'm on Twitch. Go, go check my stuff out. Um, yeah. And yeah. again, I'm glad that you had me on. Appreciate you, uh, sh- uh, sharing the love. I'm glad we were able to finally connect because I've felt you are the guest that I've had the most trouble trying to get on the show <laughs> because it turns out 17 hour time differences and having families and lives yeah. is real, <laughs> you know, but anyways, my dude. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, my friends, if you want to find me, you can find me at Gearpuri Gears. You could find this podcast anywhere podcasts are sold or at Cool Stuff Inc. every Tuesday or at YouTube every Thursday. Thank you, EK. Once again, show is brought to you by Cool Stuff, Coalesce, and Architect. And remember, my friends, it is not magic without the gathering, and we will see you next time.